Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we return to talking about a city that sparked many controversies this year, specifically when an arrest went wrong there a few months ago earlier this summer. I'm of course talking about Minneapolis, Minnesota, which was the place that sparked a lot of these riots and a lot of these protests going wrong throughout our country. For those who don't know, there was someone arrested there that unfortunately ended in a fatality and ever since then, things have been going crazy throughout the country. People have been calling it racist, even though there was no proven racism. People have said that the cops are to blame, and they're trying to act like they're all racist and terrible, and even they've tried to defund the police repeatedly in multiple cases and cities, including in Minneapolis where this happened. That's right. After this bad event happened, their big brain idea was to defund the police and give them less of a budget and less things to do, which inevitably will of course make the city less safe. And now, now we're talking about a follow-up to that. A few months later, Later, and the crime is certainly rising in Minneapolis, and you're never going to believe who these people in the government there are blaming for that. This government is, of course, very much Democrat, very liberal dominated there for a long time, and they're the ones who voted to end the police there. And now, of course, as a result of that, the crime has caught up, but they're not going to take responsibility. Oh, no, no, they're not going to claim, hey, we made a mistake. Let's bring back the cops. No. In fact, in a bold move that we're going to talk about more today, those politicians in Minneapolis, are actually going to blame the cops. They're doubling down. They're like flip-flopping and saying, hey, it's the cops' fault that we defunded you and you don't have enough money to stop this crime that we caused. So it's a real absurd idea. It's a real out there premise, but nothing surprises you now coming from modern day Democrats and liberals. So I don't think anyone wouldn't see this coming completely, but we're going to talk about it more anywhere, get to the details, get to the specifics and some of the players and what's really going on in Minneapolis soon. But first, First, let's take a quick moment to check out our sponsor. In this day and age, it's a really scary time to be a cop or law enforcement in the United States of America. There's a lot of anti-cop rhetoric going around out there, so we need to support our boys in blue more now than ever. That's why today I'm offering you guys this free police coin that is available only to the No BS audience. All you have to do is pay for shipping, and you could be the proud owner of this beautiful golden coin that represents the police officers in our country, the true heroes of our day and age. The Brave Patriot is offering this deal for a limited time, so get your free coin today. Make sure you click on our exclusive link below this video, and again, they're free. You only have to pay the shipping, so make sure you check out the link below this video, and thanks for your time. Now, back to the show. Great, now that that's out of the way, let's talk more about this story. NPR News has more details. That's NPR, not the notorious NPR. No, this is from the area. It says, with violent crime on the rise in Minneapolis, city council asks, where are the police? Well, that's a great question. They're actually unable to operate because you guys defunded them. In addition, we're not even getting the full story there. You see, it's not just the defunding that is inhibiting the police's ability to take action there. In addition, they don't have the public support. That is really important when you're policing an area. If everyone in the area hates you and thinks you're racist and thinks you just go out and kill people willy-nilly, which is the dominant narrative of these types of people, of the left, of BLM, they're making the police out to be villains. They're putting targets on the back of the police's heads, essentially. You know, they're saying, hey, these cops are bad guys. If they come around, they're going to rob you, steal you, kill you. You know, they're, they're claiming all this stuff about the cops, which really makes their job next to impossible. And that's not even the end of it. The next step makes things even worse because now we know that if the cops get attacked, if they're going after them, like say a criminal comes at them with a weapon or a fight or a knife or something like that, then the cops can't even defend themselves now. They can't even save their own lives because this is what happened in Minneapolis. This was a case of someone resisting arrest and trying to fight cops, as was what happened in all these other major events. The arrest in Atlanta had a similar situation there. The guy was going for for a taser. Recently, there was a guy coming after cops with a knife straight up in his hand. That's also what happened similarly in Kenosha. It was a guy fighting cops with a weapon. So all four of these major cases this year that are supposed cop brutality, supposed police being racist, well, they all involve the police defending themselves from violent criminals. So since we can now gather that that's not okay for Democrats, that's not okay for the majority of like corporations and all these people supporting BLM, well, if 
If they can't defend their own lives, how can they go out and police the city? How can they go out and police things if everyone's hating them? They have targets on their backs. If they defend themselves, they'll either get fired or arrested or put to jail for the rest of their lives. So they have all the world working against them. And it's really the city council's fault. It's the Democrat politicians' fault. And that's why it's so ridiculous to hear this complaint from Minneapolis. They're saying, where are the police? Well, they're out there, but you won't fund them or defend them or let them do their jobs. The meeting was slated as a Minneapolis City Council study session on police reform. But for much of the two-hour meeting, council members told Police Chief Madaria Arredondo that their constituents are seeing and hearing street racing, which sometimes results in crashes, brazen daylight carjackings, robberies, assaults, and shootings. And they asked Arredondo what the department is doing about it. Residents are asking where are the police, said Jamal Osman, newly elected council member of Ward 6. He said he's already been inundated with complaints from residents that calls for police aren't being answered. That is the only public safety option they have at the moment, MPD. They rely on MPD, and they are saying they are nowhere to be seen, Osman said. So this is definitely a situation of kind of, you get what you get. You know, if you pull this off and your city goes into full riot mode, I'm sure it's not the whole city. You know, it's a small vocal minority that's being violent like this, but that's just the problem. This minority, this small group of radical leftists, they go out and destroy the city when the cops are trying to defend themselves and do their job and arrest this criminal, you know, they go out and do that and then they spark riots that come from these radicals. And then in addition, the city council defunds the police while also hypocritically hiring their own security guards, by the way. And now we're getting more hypocritical claims saying, where are the cops? We rely on them. Well, you should have been backing them months ago. You shouldn't have been calling them racist. You shouldn't have been making stuff up and defending the criminals. Now you are in bed with the criminals, essentially. That's the big problem here is they've sided with crime. They've decided to defend violent criminals in the act. They're saying they can attack cops and go at them with weapons. And that's what they've spawned here. This is the result of that. And it's finally coming back to bite them. And this is why it's an interesting follow-up story for us. I mean, it's just, this is what happens. This is what everyone says was going to happen. If you defund the police, if you villainize them and don't support them, they're not going to come when you call. You know, they don't have enough resources. They're not going to come to you if you're the ones especially calling them after you just kick them out. Like this is not a specific example. Like this guy says residents are calling the police, but there have been specific ones that were similar to this, more hypocritical though. Like for example, in the Chaz region of Portland and these other cities that have had these autonomous zones, you know, in Washington and Oregon and stuff like that. Those places have actually turned to call the cops. So they kick out the cops and act like they want their own city in there. But then when something goes bad, they still call the cops. That's just the big hypocritical part of this because the same thing goes with these like protesters and Antifa and even the BLM people. Like they say they hate the cops and they want to get rid of them. But as soon as someone robs them or hurts them, they're calling the cops right away. Like they realize that is their best and sometimes only option, but it doesn't really mesh with them. They don't understand the hypocrisy and how it's so wrong and how they've created this bad situation and made it far, far worse. They're divulging into this sort of postmodern society. It's really crazy. Just months after leading an effort that would have defunded the police department, city council members at Tuesday's work session pushed Chief Madaria Arredondo to tell them how the department is responding to the violence. The number of reported violent crimes like assaults, robberies, and homicides are up compared to 2019, according to MPD crime data. More people have been killed in the city in the first nine months of 2020 than were slain in all of last year. Property crimes like burglaries and auto thefts are also up. Incidents of arson have increased 55% over the total at this point in 2019. Well, I gotta say, I am not going to be visiting this area anytime soon. I am really glad I'm not in a Democrat-run city or state right now. They are a mess. They are dangerous. You cannot live there freely. You cannot be safe. I would not want to recommend anyone raise their kids there. I mean, God forbid you'd want to raise your kids there or have a family and a future. I mean, that's just not happening. This is a place that's been totally ruined by Democrats, their violent rhetoric, their BLM protests and rioters and these crazy people in the streets. And that's just not limited to personal excuses. Like there's family. Like I said, there's also who wants to run a business there. You know, you want to really build a restaurant in Minneapolis right now when you know you have a higher chance of getting robbed. Like, no, no, you're going to go to a safer state. You're going to leave 
this place and no one wants to visit there. They're not going to get any tourists anytime soon. No new residents. It's just going to be flight from these cities. And the biggest thing I recommend, and I hope, God willing, is these people that leave, don't leave with your politics. If you're leaving a Democrat run, totally tore down place like Minneapolis, like a lot of people are leaving California right now, don't bring that blue politics to the new place you move to. Recognize the fact that Democrats ruined where you live. So next, don't vote for them again in your new area. It doesn't make sense. And we need to keep the rest of the country sane. And hopefully we can fix this stuff up soon. But this is going to take a long time to correct because they're not even identifying the problems yet. They're not even going to fix it if they can't recognize and elect conservatives or something like that. Reverse these bad ideas. Stop these protests. Have the people stop hating on the cops. There's a lot to be done there. For his part, Arredondo told council members that the department has instituted several measures, including adding more officers to patrol and investigate duties and cracking down on robberies. But council members told Arredondo that residents are hearing a different message from officers. Council President Lisa Bender, who was among those leading the call to overhaul the department, suggested that officers were being defiant. Her constituents say officers on the street have admitted that they're purposely not arresting people who are committing crimes. This is not new, Bender said, but it is very concerning in the current context. So we've got another liberal council president and she's attacking the cops again. She's doubling down and they want the cops to help them. And then they take away their funding and tell the people that they're villains and put targets on their backs. And then now they're complaining again that they're not doing their jobs when they can't do their jobs. That's just total insanity. I mean, this person, this Lisa Bender and her other kind of people, they're really bad. They're really just I don't know if they're just dumb or they're just evil or they're mean or they just hate the world. I mean, I'm sure they have private security right now, so they don't have to worry about it. But it's a really, really bad look. And it goes to show that it's going to take a long time to fix Minneapolis. And this problem isn't going anywhere, especially since nothing's been identified. As I just said, Minneapolis has sparked this event. This whole summer kind of started off with the arrest gone wrong there with George Floyd and then from there, these other ones happened, and it's gotten worse and worse. And, you know, you don't blame it all on this one city. It's really a greater thing. Like, the Democrats are throwing fits this year. They can't stand the fact that they're going to lose this election in November, less than two months from now. Remember to vote Trump. Remember to register to vote. All that stuff, guys. We got to get out and vote. But the point is, Democrats are using crazy crises to destroy this country and try to get it to look bad so that Trump looks bad and maybe Biden can win. But the problem is that might actually work if they had a decent candidate to back it up. But Biden's falling apart too. And then all these de evil plans have backfired. Like they've gone too far. They've destroyed the country too much. So the protests are backfiring. The overhyping of the virus, another angle for them has backfired. Now people are starting to recognize the less severity of it. And yeah, and then in addition to that, now now they're bringing up this new one that just came up. The wildfires are being blamed on climate change. And that's a thing that they're trying to blame on Trump, too. So it's a big mess. But this is the follow up. And hopefully we continue to get proven right like we have been in this case in Minneapolis. That about wraps things up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you comment your thoughts on everything below. Also hit that like button to get this shared. Subscribe if you're new and hit the bell for notifications, too. Until next time, have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow.